Mango 6. And now starting to the top left of Red City, we have our turn player for SKT1. It is... SK Telecom T1 Fantasy. There he is, using his QSEN DT35. To the top right, we have his opponent, starting for Samsung Khan, the Zerg player in blue. It is, of course... Samsung Khan Solar. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the way that the Sola had to uh, take to uh, come here into the Challenger League. In his bracket, he defeated two no-names in the early rounds. They were listed with the Korean names in the brackets and didn't even have a real ID. And then in the third round, which also was the semi-final, he had to destroy the Destroyer. A Terran player who got buys up to this point. So uh, it was also a player that we don't know anything about. So uh, a little bit of an easier opponent to face. And then in the final, Sola had to face a Protoss player. He was up against Zest, who was able to take out Lucky, for example. And that was like the first challenge that Sola really had. And he was able to take this final with a 2-0, yeah. advance to the Challenger League, and finds himself now facing a Terran player, and a very strong one at that. Um, Zest is also the player known as Pichil Gob or Wookie, for those of you guys yeah. who don't know that. So he's actually a really good Protoss. Ah, he's really good. But the guy changes his nicknames yeah, like the other people down there were. Exactly. That's that's why a lot of people might not have known who Zest was. I actually just learned his new idea was Zest very recently, so... Um, when we have a very normal opening here, look at this patrol on the drone just making sure he's not being bunkered. I really like that. Not cutting any corners against Fancy, who will do a Reaper opening here just to get some scouting information. Yep, the Reaper is a great starting unit here for Terran. There are so many very aggressive builds these days too. If you watch pro streams, you can see that a lot of Terran players are experimenting a little bit more with Reaper openings once again. They were really, really popular when StarCraft II Heart of the Swarm came out. There was a lot of Reaper abuse on ladder, but Zergs got used to how to defend against them, and the Terran had to sacrifice economy in the early game to pull it off. But these days, there are actually a few builds around where Terran players are trying to take a very aggressive stance in the early game again. By the way, we have a double hatch before pool, and this is going to make it a lot harder to defend against the Reaper. You know, the Reaper is normally there just to, to be a little bit annoying, force some lings and try to micro against the lings, but now with those queens being super late, this could actually do some damage. I actually don't think that he's able to take too much down here. If Solar micros well, he should be able to build a few extractors, maybe even a spine crawler, cancel them as soon as the queen's out. But you're certainly right. This is a scenario where Solar is a little bit endangered. He will have to micro very well to make this work. His problem really is, or uh, the, the good thing for him is that Fantasy was only building one single Reaper. He never intended this to be an aggressive build where he actually puts too much pressure with three, four Reapers onto his opponent. Look, this is actually messing up his economy quite a bit with the uh, evolution campers. He couldn't make spine crawlers because his pool wasn't ready yet. And now, I mean, he's doing the best he can to save his drones. He does lose one, but this is a lot of resources lost. But I would say it's still worth it. It's absolutely worth it. If you get away with the double hatch before pool, it puts you in such a good position. And now the queens are about to be out. But just think about what would have happened here if Fantasy would have decided to go for two Reapers or three. Yeah, it could have been devastating. Yeah. And now the, the lings are finally ready. He needs to go see that, that hatch where you can assume that it's there when he saw the evolution chambers because it's obviously much cheaper to start uh, a spine crawler. And when we talk about the opening here and about how Sola tried to be a little bit greedy, we of course also have to mention that Fantasy got a bit lucky with the scouting pattern that he took here. The reason why Sola went for this opening was he was going for a calculated risk because it's such a huge four-player map and Fantasy was lucky enough to find him on the first position that he scouted. But with only one Reaper, there is only so much that he can do. Yep. Now he sees a glimpse of the hatchery, of course, here and will come over just a little bit too late, unfortunately. The Queen's already out. And this is awesome now for Solar. He took down the Reaper. Fantasy knows that there's a third base, though, which is the most important part. But at least Solar can be sure that uh, his opponent doesn't see when he's taking his gas. He's going to continue to be very aggressive here with his Hellions, knowing that there's just a few queens out and the wall is not up yet. The creep isn't even connected between the bases. So he's continuing with this aggression. This is great positions for Fantasy to continue this pressure. If there were cross positions, you know, it was, of course, would be much more difficult. And this is now the task that Solar has to spread his creep. And with the opening that he chose, he really tried tries to go into a massive amount of queens, but the Hellions are already there, going into the main base, and all those drones are now endangered. He has to micro perfectly here to lose as little as possible. Yeah, he's he's trying his best here, but he's losing quite a few drones. He needs to run away. He's actually going to fight oh. with his drones for a little bit. He loses way too much here. Yeah, this is way too much. He should have never lost this many. And he never really pulled all the queens back in time. All of Every the drones drone. are gone. 19 of them, Wolf. Every single drone that he had in his main base is now dead. 
And this is potentially even game ending because Fantasy has Stim coming up and he can hit a timing after this. I am really surprised that it happened because what Sola should have done, and I'm really sure he would have if he realized what was going on, he would have pulled two of his queens back to the ramp, blocked the ramp, waited for the fourth and the fifth queen to spawn, and then push out again. If you do this, you expose your natural, but when the Hellions walk into the natural, you can always just drone drill the drones back into the main yeah. base. You will lose a few of them because they stack up, but you won't lose 19 of them. Yeah, that's very true. Um, you know, a, a risky build sometimes comes with these consequences. The rest of his queens weren't ready yet, and you're definitely right. He could have done a lot more of the queens he already had. I really like what he did in the beginning, taking this calculated risk, but then in the follow-up he was a little bit sloppy, and Fantasy was aggressive enough and confident in his own abilities to harass that he took the chance, and he was rewarded for it. He took down so many harvesters that the advantage that Sola had in the early game is now nearly gone. Yeah, and you know what's interesting is Fancy was supply blocked for quite some time, so he's even behind in supply right now still. And now the drones have to be pulled again. He could lose so many of them. Oh, the target is poor, though. He attacks the hatchery. I think that was a mistake. The queen can do uh, quite a lot here now. Talking about the drones lost and uh, trying to put this a little bit in perspective, the reason why Sola is now still uh, in a really good shape in the overall supply and also in the worker supply is with the three hatches and all those queens out there, he had all the lava and the resources that he needed to drone up immediately again. If he was still stuck on two bases, that would have been a much bigger problem than it was for him now with the three. But You're it's so still, right. of course, a big problem. Losing 20 drones is never a pleasant thing to happen. It's to. never pleasant. You know, it's a lot of larvae you've got to replace. And, you know, in this case, because he had all the larvae, he was able to do this. But imagine if he didn't lose 20 drones and he had to the ability to make Zerglings instead or whatever else he wanted. That would have been, of course, much more ideal. His economy would be much better. Yeah. What we have now for Sola as the follow-up is immediately a Baneling Nest. He's going into Lair, as you can see. We have also Overlord Speed being researched. An upgrade that we see a lot more in Heart of the Swarm than we did in Wings of Liberty. It's just so good for Zerg players to get a glimpse here, and especially against Widow Mindy later on. If you go Mutalus, always want to have the speed upgrade so that your Overseers can fly with them, are not left behind all the time, and can get at least a glimpse of a hidden Widow Mind so that your Mutalists are not taken out. Very true. You know what's so interesting is Fantasy's Widowmine placement. He's got them really nicely spread out here, which is going to stop any scouts from seeing that third base is landed. And so he has no idea right now, Solar that is, that that third base is actually over there and landed. He knows there's a third command center, but he doesn't know how long it's been there. And the position is, of course, also a thing that we have to talk about a little bit. Fantasy decided to expand to the bottom left of the map or to the center left of the map instead of uh, expanding towards his opponent. This is something that Terran players will do at some point, especially if they decide to not go for another orbital but into a planetary. What we usually see is Terran players go for three to four orbitals and then start their planetary fortresses. All those satellite bases are harder to defend, so planetaries in the later stage of the game are very common. But if you want to take this base towards the Zerg, you should definitely go for a, a planetary, unless you already have a huge lead in the game and you're confident in your abilities to defend well. You're very right about this. The creep is getting pushed back here with the first few medevacs coming out. You can lift against those Banelings, but he's actually doing a ton of damage because he still has those Hellions from earlier, and they can kite against the Lings pretty decently with the support of the medevacs and also those Widow Mines. Oh! Very smart. Pulls one Ling in front. And with the micro that we saw from Fantasy so far, it's very dangerous for Sola to engage those units without having speed for the Banelings. That's why you always pull back. If the Hellions get a few good shots off, the Banelings are gone, and the Zerglings alone just don't cut it against this army. So he needs to wait for the speed, which is now done for his Banelings. This makes the army of Sola so much more dangerous. It certainly does, but 1-1 one, one is not ready for his Zerglings just yet, whereas Fancy has 1-1 one, one with 2-2 two, two on the way. He has to make sure he splits really well against these speed banes. Oh no, a flank! Oh, that was so well done. Oh my god, that was like the perfect micro fantasy. Sola with a very smart decision to run half of his Zerglings behind the Terran army, then the Banelings come in, and Fantasy, like a god, realizes immediately that all his bio units will be lost if he doesn't get out there. He's surrounded, but he picks them up and moves away in an instant. Yeah, goes right into the main base. And don't forget, during all this, that drop over here at the natural is continuing to do damage. He's just sending not enough lings every single time, and he's losing several harvesters here. Great multitasking here by Fantasy, always aware of what's going on. Going on. And what really comes through for the Terran player now is that he is also about to complete plus two plus two. This puts him way ahead in upgrades. Yeah. He was ahead in upgrades for a little bit and then of course it closed, but now it's, he's going to be ahead again. He's basically spending this entire game one upgrade up over his opponent. 
And, you know, this is going to get worse and worse. He does not actually... No, he does know about that base to the right, so he could actually attack that with uh, a group of Marines if he wants to. It's not connected by creep just yet. It's very far away. And those Mutalists that we have out now, they of course struggle a bit against all those Widow Mines and against the Marines. Widow Mine count is now at 10. We have 43 Marines on the map with plus 2, plus 2. Very difficult to engage for Sola. He has to wait for really good Widow Mine, uh, uh, sorry, Baneling uh, hits. The problem that he has here really is that the Fantasy is even scanning ahead every single time to make sure that there are no Burrowed Banelings. <gasps> something that Sola didn't even utilize yet. Yeah. You're, you're so right, that was really scary. I, I had to hold my breath on that one. I thought he was going to lose all his drones. Oh, nice pick up on the meta back. No boost away there. Ah, uh, plus three, plus three started Fantasy with a perfect macro game against Sola, who looks a little bit overwhelmed, even though he's now ahead in overall supply by a tiny bit. Yeah, it's just he's being attacked from so many different angles by a great Fantasy micro. And this time, of course, this drop will have to boost away once more. But he has the Burrow upgrade for the Widow Mines finishing up here very soon as well. And this is going to be a bigger problem for Solar to deal with. He's yeah. going to have to deal with the Widow Mine count, which is getting extremely high. He's making three at a time right now. You can really see how the Terran player is now building up a bank where Solar is struggling to go to a Hive Tech. He's now adding the Infestation Pit, trying to get a bit more tech out going here. Going into a Hive would help him a lot. But the problem really is that the Terran player is on 2-2, going into 3-3, and he is hitting everywhere on the map. Taking a fourth. And all those Widow Mines with beautiful hits here. Sola is definitely in a lot of trouble. He really is. As long as the splits are good for the Terran army, he can't even engage against it right now. Really nice dancing forward there by Fantasy. And he's even got a few Marines set up at his base. He's making here going to be a planetary very soon. He's now ahead in supply, nearly maxed out. We have Fantasy with a lot of money. And he has also the production to pull this off. Plus three, plus three, halfway down. Good splits against the Banelings. And here come the hits on the Widow Mines. Pretty decent. He needs to get back, though. He doesn't have all of his army here. Great baiting into those mines once again. Hive is now on its way. We still have plus two not ready for the armor. Also not for attack for Sola here. And he is really thinned out by Fantasy's drop play. Yeah, the Fantasy drop play is really just picking him apart at this point in time. He, he gets good Widow Mines in here. He even drops Widow Mines into that base so that the defense with Lings is very difficult to execute. There's no Overseer nearby, and of course the Widow Mines still stay alive. Very just, solid performance here by Fantasy. Yeah, he just keeps pushing in. He does not stop. He's attacking the entire game. You know, I'm really afraid for Sola here. As soon as plus three, plus three hits for Fantasy, he should be able to wrap this up. Right now, he can't... I mean... The thing is, he has still to be, of course, very cautious here. One bad engagement and things might spiral out of control, so it's not like Fantasy has the game won just yet. But he has all the pieces in position that he can take the game. He has a huge advantage, even though the supply is the same. With the bank, the income and the upgrades, he's the one calling the shots in the first game. Yeah, absolutely so. And he's got that forward base up and running now, and he can just continue to expand towards his opponent if he wants to. Oh, great little mind shot there. The Overseer is like, screw that. Yeah, away. it's just so difficult for Sola to turn things around and to, to, to be the aggressor in the game. Oh, he, he gets another shot on his views, and, and even those little things can actually start to add up when your views don't have as many hit points as they would otherwise. Sola is really putting up a fighting game here, but Fantasy has all the cards, and oh, sick, what a mine hits! The Bane Link's moving in, and Fantasy, now he's starting to split in the last second possible, doing a good job here, all those Bane Links, they connect in the end, but that was a lot of resources lost for Sola, and Sola is already down 40 supply. Yeah, and he's gonna lose this base. He may lose this game shortly afterwards, just simply because he doesn't have the production, he doesn't have the bank that Fantasy is building right now. He's really trying to fight here, but as highlighted by our observer just a second, to go. The upgrade advantage for Fantasy is just enormous. That's the gap that Sola is trying to close out now with a plus two attack upgrade that he forgot earlier with a plus three armor and of course also Adrenal Glance finally being on Hive Tech. Sola is trying to capitalize on it. Yeah, and he is capitalizing, uh, you know, as well as he can, but the drops and just the ground-based attacks that are hitting him in all sides. You can see his creep is basically non-existent at this point because Fantasy has cleared it all up. Yeah. The creep is really being thrown back, and those Mutalists, they are the task force that is sent in every time a drop appears on the minimap, but they can only do so much. The rest of the army of Fantasy is moving forward once again. Bio Widow mine the composition for the SKT-1 Terran, and he is executing it in a beautiful fashion. Yep. He takes out the hatchery that was hidden to the bottom right before it finishes. He's going to get this one as well. And the Widow mine count is now at 17. GG. GG, and game.